Greetings, celestial ones, and happy new moon. This is UA Light with your celestial insight for the month of July. I hope that you've been taking good care of yourselves since the solstice and full moon in Capricorn kicked off cancer season on June 20th. Since the solstice, we've had Mercury, Venus, and the sun moving through cancer. And it can ignite depths of emotion and mixed feelings about prioritizing your internal world versus external responsibilities. Maybe feeling tension between a need for order, productivity, and structure in external and domestic affairs versus your need for downtime and safe space with loved ones or yourself to transmute emotions as you tend to your dreams. With heavy Cancerian transits, you could be contending with your right to take space to refill your cup and to reflect and refigure your projects or priorities or any imbalances, particularly any imbalances in overgiving or overworking and repressing emotions or any habits of holding on to emotions and old narratives in ways that hold you back. These last few weeks of cancer season and this first week of July, time may just feel weird and inconsistent, like the push and pull of ocean waves under the light of the moon. You may feel there is a serious need to plan and make careful decisions that impact the future, while you may not have enough information, and a need to take focused action in the present, while you may actually find your affairs slowing down with delays. At the same time, energy currents may bring waves of nostalgia and sensitivity and make you want to go inward and seek personal comforts, peace, and quiet in sacred space while you're reflecting and wrapping up big emotional chapters from the past. At the same time, there's a lightness around, indicating you're near the light at the end of a tunnel in your soul journey, a lightness that makes you proud of how far you've come, a lightness that makes the present and future feel inspiring and promising, asking you to just have faith as you find a flow in doing all the internal and external work required to help you write your next chapter and shape your reality around the truest narrative of who you are on a soul level and who you are at your best, and around what you can achieve if certain things were improved and certain blocks removed on your path. And it's all thanks to a particular combination of retrograde and cardinal energy currents happening across all elements of the zodiac in addition to some critical lunar, solar, and star activations throughout this month that open divine gateways of clarity and even liberation in some way. So let's discuss. Take a minute to subscribe to both the YouTube channel and the podcast wherever you listen and show support on YouTube with a super thanks a like and a comment letting me know how this resonates with you and if you're listening into the podcast tap the stars to leave us a positive review if listening into the pod know that you can follow along with visuals of beautiful cards and key astro calendar dates and info mention in the rest of this video we'll cover the esoteric and practical meanings of key aspects for the month and go over the new moon in Cancer Astrology briefly, and the full moon in Capricorn Astrology as well for this month of July. And we'll end with monthly horoscopes for each sign. So let's get into it. So I'm first going to paint the picture of our monthly aspects, just really sort of listing and narrating um, how these planets are moving and what key sort of aspects they are making. And then I will essentially sum up what it all means. 
So I mentioned that we have a particular combination of retrograde and cardinal energy currents happening across all elements of the zodiac in addition to critical lunar, solar, and star activations throughout this month, just really contributing to the sort of push and pull dynamics of the month's energy, okay? And some of these energy currents include us having two consecutive full moons ruled by Saturn in the first and last critical degrees of Capricorn. Additionally, Saturn and Neptune station retrograde in Pisces at the top of the month, and they make many aspects with the inner celestial bodies that influence our day-to-day -day lives the first three weeks of July. So our planets Venus, Mercury, Mars, and the Sun. And aspects to Neptune retrograde also happen while it's at its critical anaerobic degree of crisis and important decision making. We're also entering the Mercury retrograde pre shadow. And so that really pulls in a lot of that energy of urgency while also maybe feeling the tension to slow down and carefully review things. The inner planets, Mercury, Venus, plus the Sun, are also entering Leo one by one throughout this month and making oppositions to Pluto retrograde while it is moving between the critical zero and first degree of Aquarius. And as inner planets, Mercury, Venus, and the Sun move into Leo this month and travel between 5 to 15 degrees, they will also be making these really lucky trines to the North Node in Aries that is at between the 9th and 10th degree all month. And this is going to be gifting you positive things throughout the month in relationship to some other sort of celestial and solar and star activations that sort of present this cosmic gateway for you. And I'm gonna get there. <laughs> Additionally, right, we have Mars in Taurus this month. And Mars is going to have a dynamic meetup with Uranus at the beginning of week three on July 15th. And then travel and enter Gemini. Throughout that third week, it's going to be traveling into Gemini at around the time of the full moon in Capricorn on July 20th through the 21st. And when Mars enters Gemini, it will sextile Neptune, that's retrograde, and also trine Pluto, that's retrograde, while they are both at those critical degrees that I mentioned. So, with the majority of our month's aspects, including our major outer planets being retrograde and in these signs of karma and blessings and gains, there is this divine emphasis on the balance between reviewing the past to incorporate lessons learned while you're being active in the present in order to reap rewards from past efforts and break karmic cycles. And also, you know, the task of in doing your review, not getting caught up in nostalgia or memories that could present any emotional instability or fear, right? False evidence appearing real. And the past is having a negative and karmic hold on you in whatever ways that hindrances could show up for you. It could be trauma from the past or issues related to family or other relationships or issues related to where you live or outdated beliefs, habits, and ways of being, including old stories and narratives that you believe about yourself or that you tell yourself or that you keep alive that could be disempowering you, right? And not serving you. This cosmic weather, especially at this halfway point of the year, 
means, you know, a divine emphasis on critical transformative choices and committed action and potential blessings, right, that have high stakes for the future. Transformative choices and actions taken and any blessings could end karmic chapters, circumstances, and habits that may have affected you for a long time. And these things can align you with your divine truth, your true north, or your highest purpose and highest timeline. Our lunar activity also represents this. New moons are generally about new beginnings. But in the sign of cancer, this is deeper. And this is because cancer is also esoterically correlated with being a gateway of the soul's rebirth. Additionally, because our Saturn ruled Capricorn full moons are happening at the first and the last degree, they are also essentially influencing or highlighting this need to essentially master the Capricorn journey. Right? It highlights the slow, dedicated journey to achievement and maturity where you gain spiritual and pragmatic wisdom that you can integrate to reach the peak of the mountain of mastery of self, your affairs, and your outcomes in the 3D material and earthly realm. Our solar and star activations this month are also representative of the divine presenting a gateway of rebirth and liberation. From this month through to Lion's Gate next month, really, and also into eclipse season, the second half of the year. And these sort of activations just really asking you to show up in that matured, integrated divine feminine and masculine energy to bravely chart your course, you know, sort of riding the waves of all the cardinal and light body energy that this astrology is really infusing into the world and our lives this month. So we have a number of super positive solar and celestial star activations this month that are quite literally astronomically and metaphysically representative of these divine gateways of light, right? We also have some challenging ones, right? But essentially, all of this means that our individual and collective systemic choices at this point in time really play a real part in going down a karmic or a transcendent higher path. And the power struggles, world politics, and government decisions are a sort of prime example playing out for us to see the sort of karma of not choosing divine truth and benevolent higher paths. And these things critically affecting the fates of our futures. If you look around in the news, this is what you will see, right? And I won't lie, in terms of world impact, the astrology this month really suggests so much violence and destructive choices on the horizon in global political systems. And I won't go in detail in this reading because it's important for this reading to underline the sort of urgency and the sort of intelligent beauty of how many ways the divine is making the subtle language so layered to kind of ring a bell and send a notice to those who are here to do light work that a portal is being presented to you, okay? But it's important not to spiritually bypass. So it's just important to mention that it's not all light this month, but there is a lot of light. <laughs> so at this time, I encourage you to really dig deep to consider how you can be a brave and intentional part of drawing down the visions, the light, love, and peace of the upper world, right? And play a part in building bridges to new worlds.
So our first week is our Cancer New Moon week, right? Where we're balancing self-care, our soul rebirth, and responsibility. Week two presents the celestial gateways of clarity, creativity, choices, and communication that really lasts all month. Week three, you can really think of as the week of dynamic day new Mars. Mars will conjunct Uranus. It will move into Gemini and make a trine to Pluto. And then we'll also have our full moon in Capricorn. And then week four, Leo season begins. But let's discuss the specific aspects that will be presenting these celestial sort of gateways. It begins with our Cancer New Moon. And the new moon ushers in an era of positivity, possibility, and prosperity, potentially, because of an alignment between our Earth Sun, the Moon, and Sirius, the solar star of the galaxy, and Venus, the planet of harmony and understanding. So they are all going to be aligned this full moon. This alignment opens a portal leading us to Lionsgate and then into our final eclipses of the year where it really can lend spiritual support for epiphanies of higher truth and spiritual support for prosperity and just feelings of happiness and enjoyment related to family, home, and property. Another symbol of the spiritual celestial gateway is the month-long grand kite of liberation, higher truth, higher power, harmony, and prosperous, ambitious ideas. So we have a grand kite that is pointed toward the north node and formed along the nodal points all month long, really. And the aspects of this grand kite include a harmonious grand trine between Jupiter and Gemini, Chariclo in Aquarius, who I mentioned in our reading last month, and also the south node in Libra. So this is an air trine, okay, related to education, ideas, um, ambitious inventions, and uh, learning from others. Our north node in Aries and our south node in Libra form our tip and end points of the kite, where the north node in Aries is the uh, top tip of the kite and the south node represents the end point. And the top of our kite, the triangle that is connected by three points, <laughs> is uh, we have Jupiter and then Chericlo and Aquarius on either side of our North Node and Aries tip point of the kite. Okay, so to explain this, essentially Jupiter in Gemini remains in a sort of flowing sextile to our North Node in Aries and in a trine to the south node in Libra, plus some important fixed stars all month. What is spectacular about this is that Jupiter, the planet of wisdom, truth, and transcendence, remains in a close, almost exact alignment with the royal star of Aldebaran that is associated with Archangel Michael, right? Wow being a part of this grand kite aspect that is along the node lines of destiny and karma, right? And so the tip of the kite is the north node point, right? And so that is where we are being magnetically pulled, right? The point of destiny being divinely pulled toward your life purpose. 
And in this grand kite, the north node point is also stationed at a star of ambition, right? And so altogether, this kite and its aspects really suggest that ambitious ideas and your destiny can be achieved through creative experimentation, supportive learning opportunities, and some support, right, that arrives this month to help you fly, right, and to help you be released from previous painful relationship cycles and any relationship wounds. And throughout the month, remember that inner planets, Mercury, Venus, and the Sun move into Leo this month as well. And they will make trines to the North Node in Aries at that 9 to 10 degree. And this is a critical degree for Leos, right? And for Leo transit. So um, they will be also flowing very positively to Jupiter and Gemini and our South Node in Libra. And so while Mercury, Venus, and the Sun are transiting Leo this month, they will be bringing, you know, money, um, social opportunities, you know, meetings and fun interactions, and even good news, right, for educational and training opportunities that maybe lead you to other opportunities for partnership, even love, right, or prosperity that really shifts your luck, power and influence for the long term in certain areas of your life that are ruled by Aries, Gemini, Leo, or even Aquarius in your chart, okay? And this is also a lead up to our new moon in Leo, right? And our new moon in Leo in August will also happen around the same degree points, right? And so we'll get there and I won't get ahead of myself, but just know that there is a lot of synchronicity happening, right? Where one thing can lead to another. Um, and it just being really good to show up as your best self this month, right? And to be open to um, socializing, and um, brainstorming, being creative, all these kinds of things. It's important to note that these highest possibilities and potentials are a scenario um, of when opportunity meets preparation, right? Um, so much of this astrology is based on karmic rewards and blessings from your efforts and awareness, and especially efforts um, that have essentially been in process on working on something maybe for a long time, right? And so just take that with you. I hope that this month blesses you and be sure to comment on YouTube, Spotify, how this astrology manifests for you. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to know um, what your big three are, right? <laughs> in terms of your natal chart. But let's get into your more personalized horoscopes according to your zodiac sign. Make sure that you listen and watch the messages according to your rising sign and also your sun and moon sign. And you'll be able to click the timestamp in the description. Share this insight with someone you love as well. And let's get into it. Happy new moon, dear Aries. The general astrology message really already spells out your monthly message, right? Especially if you are in Aries rising. And what's so interesting is that the cards even tell a story that mirrors the collective message in terms of that push and pull energy between doing internal reflection, resting, and doing psychological and maybe even physical work on the self this month that may be emotional, that may make you reclusive, and that may be at odds with maintaining consistency in your duties. Your creative ideas and reaping rewards for your hard work may be on your mind, as well as home, memories, mother figures, and motherhood, and family matters. 
And this may be a deeply emotional, mystical, and spiritual time for you while reflecting on your journey, releasing the hold of trauma and any painful memories of family and career and working on any negative habits and recommitting to practices that really help you meet your spirituality, body image, and aesthetic goals to regain confidence. You know this is what you must do to feed your fire and show up as your best self in this next chapter of career gains and self-actualization. With things on the horizon, this month may be a time when you are really investing time and money into a new residence, um, any sort of career uh, venture that is related to the home. Um, you could be updating your home decor and wardrobe or finding joy in domestic chores and self-care rituals to enhance your emotional security and sense of order and peace while processing so much internally. Caring for your inner child and any children and pets along the way, you know? And the cards also show literal representations of the celestial alignments and oppositions that are really facilitating this powerful psychological, intellectual, physical, and professional rebirth for you that just may put you back in alignment with your most powerful, confident, and sexy self. The celestial solar and star activations are opening a gateway for your soul and career rebirth with positive news and blessed collaborations with powerful people that might bring you recognition, learning opportunities, and that allows your leadership and creative ideas and greater impact to really shine. A divine, powerful partnership is highlighted in the stars and cars and in public for some of you. For some of you, it's professional, while for others, it's romantic or both. Powerful partnerships and this next career chapter may bring up fears for you around control, trust in partnerships, contracts or negotiations, and budgeting and money and maybe competition, especially if you've had any of these sorts of issues in the past. But spirit presents this gateway of liberation and opportunity to you now with full faith in your abilities and your deservingness and also with the message that it's okay to trust and embrace your local environment, love, money, mentors and investments that you're making for your dreams, right? It's important, it's okay to trust these things that are showing up for you. That is what this new moon in Scorpio card is about. It says work through your fears. So this is your moon message for the month, you know, and the card for your sort of overall spiritual lesson and spiritual theme during this time of intense soul rebirth and these gateways of liberation is that you are the luminous warrior, right? You are the luminous warrior who has battled much darkness and who is now ready to rise like the phoenix from the ashes and like the Venusian evening and morning star, embodying the fire, the brilliance, the self-love and the light and the leadership and talent that only you could radiate based on your soul's blueprint and based on your soul's journey through the lessons of the luminous warrior. Our final message for you is new beginnings. I'd be so interested to know what good news you guys received this month and what new beginnings are on the horizon for you. Comment down below and take good care of your hearts this month. 
Happy July, dear Taurus, and happy new moon. Similar to Aries, your cards are also these beautiful depictions of light activations affecting you so personally. And this makes sense given that Venus is your ruling planet and a part of the celestial solar activations during the new moon and many aspects this month, while Mars is also in your sign. All right. So since the beginning of cancer season, you may have been limiting your engagement on social media for your mental health or rethinking how you engage with groups. And this could have been a time when you've been hard at work or in deep thought pertaining to ideas, research, school, or increasing the money you make through travel, working from home, selling personal items or from creative expressive projects that you publish that may or may not include co-workers and strategic partnerships. This month especially you're encouraged to continue reviewing your plans and daily routines and taking steady dedicated action on creative ideas and stepping out of your comfort zone to share your truth in some way. There's a message in the cards here about clarity or news arriving to you this month to help negotiate or resolve something in family, home, property, and money transaction matters or with travel and career. Your moon message indicates that you could be close to achieving a goal or resolve or into a big chapter around the full moon. With Mars and Uranus conjuncting your sign, there's a message here to be diplomatic and seek solutions and prioritize your best interests, but also to really tap into your intuition and where you're guided creatively. By the end of the month, you may be liberated from an issue, a career chapter, or even belongings to go forward. And I want to end your reading by reading the card that we pulled for your spiritual sort of message for the month and what this sort of gateway may be activating for you, okay? So we got the Wild Woman card. And when the Wild Woman dances into your reading, she reminds you of the essence of authenticity and freedom. Divested of all social constraints and cultural conformity, the wild woman holds up a mirror to your essential self, the true essence of who you are and who you're meant to become. And if you look at the cards here, that sun in reverse next to this six of swords moving forward from that space of inner truth, where we also have this card, walk your talk, right? This is absolutely what the energy is sort of um, urging and trying to activate for you in your life. It says you're invited to shine brightly. And to know that your true self is being called out to engage the world. It's a symbol that your long-held dream is beginning to take root and wants to be expressed. Your authentic self doesn't fit in a box. It needs the freedom to shine. And it's time to have courage and step into the light. Wow. The wild woman said, shine brightly. Dance with abandon. Be yourself And let the great spirit decide what happens. You'll be happy you did. All right, dear Taurus, I hope that it is a wonderful, wonderful month for you. Take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Geminis, and happy new moon. There's a big spotlight on your self-worth, net worth, self-expression, and self-leadership this month. And the celestial solar and star activity is opening a gateway to really increase your money-making ideas, financial gains, and attention received for your many talents, including talents like singing or teaching, speaking, mysticism, or anything that you do behind the scenes or even anonymously. This gateway opens to also put you in closer proximity to accomplished or powerful people and resources that could support you in your ideas, soulmates, collaborators, 
organization and letting your personality shine can help fuel your success. Saturn and Neptune retrograde in Pisces in your career house, plus Jupiter in your sign, aspecting the nodes are really highlighting your career efforts, leadership roles, social presence, and how you relate to others in person and online. There's this sense that inspiration and buzz around you could increase right now in a moment when you're a bit of a crab in your shell, maybe still healing from some social antagonism or distrust issues. And with the shadow work card here for you this month, you're invited to do some shadow work around what's a necessary boundary and measure of protecting your heart and assets versus any energetic wall or self-shrinking behaviors these could have created that could have you playing small, right? And no one can rush you with your process and this isn't to suggest that you should lower your standards or not have boundaries in any way, right? You should absolutely be integrating any lessons from your past mistakes. But you're encouraged to release old stories, any victimhood, and to take back the power of your life, your narrative, and your social and professional reputation, and any opportunities by winning others over with your positivity with that natural intelligence and charm that you have, and to welcome soulmates into your life. Across the decks used in your reading, the cards and the stars emphasize the importance of you focusing on your practical tasks and deadlines, and really harnessing your creative abilities toward your goals right now, so that you are really in harmony with the light energy and gateways of manifestation and momentum that are opening for you. Prepare for opportunities arriving for you soon and take action in creative direction and goals and vision. There's a message to get clarity, particularly handling any paperwork, right? And also to balance your spirituality with practicality. Look realistically at what limits and enhances your mental fortitude and creativity in terms of things like drugs or spiritual practices, right? And for some of you, that could mean integrating meditation for clarity and breathwork for calming the nervous system in this time of increasing information and potential work over stimulation, all right? So, um, and, and that's because Gemini, you rule the lungs, all right? So um, that is your reading for this month, Gemini. It's an incredible, incredible, lucky uh, month and summer for you, really. And uh, just take good care of yourselves, right? And look forward to all that is to come. So much light. Hello, dear Cancers, and happy new moon and solar return to you all. The stars and cards suggest that many of you are reflecting, as many do around the solar return, right? Reflecting on how you faced and overcome so many fears and achieved great feats after you've taken chances without certainty. You may be reflecting on the lessons learned and examining losses and gains from recently completed or released projects, or you may be giving yourself time to create, perfect, and complete projects behind the scenes before moving on to something else. But there's a message here about releasing something out into the world and considering how you present yourself to the world. For many cancers, this release was actually giving birth to a child and now being in a stage of navigating attachment to your babies, or trust with the outside world and resting and caring for your health and career. For others, it's about releasing projects into the world like books, creative content or memoirs. While for others, it's about research and discussions that you're having on these deep sort of contemplative topics like 
psychology and spirituality and relationships or trauma, maybe discussing all you've learned. For others, release is about letting go of a relationship or marriage or property or control in some asset like a business. For others, release is about finishing home renovations. But there's this sense of you examining who you've become to guide your decision making while you're at another new ending and beginning personally and professionally. For some of you, because your work is so personal and you have the north node of fate in Aries, which is the sign of identity and appearance affecting your house of career, you may be thinking deeply about how the personal becomes so public and entangled with public perceptions and discussions of your achievements, as well as the money you make. And all of that may be making it easy for you you and others to judge how you appear. So because of this, you may be reflecting on the long journey you've had working to release pressures about living up to or attaining some ideal or traditional notion of home, family, relationships, and pressures to look and dress a certain way. And in reflecting on that journey, it is what you may be trying to harness and maintain in this moment as you go forward trying to have joy and confidence in your commitments. And it makes sense. This is what you're urged to do with these retrogrades, a solar return, and especially Jupiter in your 12th house of resolution, rest, reflection, and imagination, aspecting the North Node in your house of career, public reputation, awards, and achievements. So dear Cancers, I hope that it's safe and easy journeying for you and that you reach resolution and a deep sense of self-acceptance and trust in your path forward. Take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Leos. Happy new moon. The celestial, solar, and star activations are opening a gateway of opportunity for you to begin learning or sharing new knowledge, courses, a new skill, or a project that you've been working on behind the scenes. Or opening a gateway for you to begin expanding your investments or collaborative relationships with peers you respect in your industry behind the scenes. For some of you, you may be planning a tour, pop-up shops, and more as you think of ways to improve public image and share your message and creations. This is generally a month with opportunities to boost your appearance, favor, and charm in the eyes of the public, or even to win a contract or increase your success. But this new moon highlights your 12th house of rest, as well as dreams, and despite the creative opportunities to be public facing and charming, it may conflict with your desire for privacy and solitude at this time. In this month, there could be some news or big decision that has to be made with a sourcing contract, collab, or some legal, professional, or marriage partnership agreement this month that marks a new beginning for you. There's this sense of needing to honestly consider the longevity potential of a project or relationship you're invested in when feeling like there is no growth, no mutual understanding, or mutual effort to improve satisfaction, gains, or losses. The stars and cards show and suggest that effort is needed and maybe you are in the process of devising a new strategy and partnerships to transform trust, cooperation, collaboration, and fairness in relationships and public perception. The cards suggest that new developments will be revealed. Maybe a product that uses natural resources from the earth like beauty or food or personal care products. And for some of you, there may be divorce or quiet separation 
or collaboration behind the scenes that at the end of the day liberates you or opens up new opportunity for you. So dear Leos, let me know in the comments what's happening for you, how this resonates, and take good care of your hearts this month. Happy new moon and month of July, dear Virgos. Your reading is short and sweet this month. And it's really because the stars and cards put a huge spotlight on you continuing to celebrate successes and prioritize fun social experiences and leisure travel and love and close relationships, as well as self-care and any attention to health issues. Maybe areas that you've neglected after a period of intense focus on work ventures. But this month is about you being led by your natural interests, improvisation, and creativity, and your desires. And not putting too much pressure on yourself, even if you do work on some things behind the scenes. In terms of desires, for many of you, despite fears and expectations, a relationship may progress to the next level of commitment. And for others, you may get news of a critical decision in your favor in any legal issues or opportunities that you've applied for, right? You may be receiving news uh, around the full moon, maybe the third through the fourth weeks of the month, okay? And that's your message, all right? That's your message this month. We have the flow card here. And everything just looks easy and breezy. Let me know um, what may be happening for you. And take good care of your hearts. Happy new moon and month of July, dear Libras. This new moon and monthly astrology is all about you considering your long-term happiness, reputation, and professional or financial goals you want to achieve. The cards and stars suggest that a new path is calling you and that you have your eyes on someone you'd like to approach for a project, a position, or partnership, or even a date, <laughs> or that generally you are interested in expanding your mind and relationships to include people who share your passions. Maybe you're setting personal or professional goals related to health, wellness, design, or finance, or have your eyes on someone um, in these professions, right? Maybe in the helping, counseling, teaching, or finance professions. And your determination and free spirit may require critical decisions to balance home and family life and maybe any travel. But in general, Whatever it is, all cards in your spread this month mirror the cardinal energy of this auspicious astrology with the message for you to claim your higher destiny, potential, and dreams. Seek divine counsel and partnership and also empower yourself in your own leadership skills and go after what or who you want. The Grand Trine and Celestial Gateway bring luck for these areas, okay? So I hope that this aids in your journey. Definitely like this video, subscribe across listening and YouTube channels, and take good care of your hearts. Happy new moon and July, dear Scorpios. The cards tell a story of you sharing in divine wisdom with others and experiencing divine alignments, encounters, and new wisdom through travel, study abroad, publishing, and general exchange. And maybe experiencing divine alignments through realignments and detours. There's this story of close encounters and mind-blowing encounters with people who are different or at a distance from you, pointing you to deep truths and cultural and ancient wisdoms that resonate and that inspired you 
to revise your perspectives or, or deadlines or travel dates or daily routines and sense of cultivating home. There is this sense of the divine inviting you to dance and play. And these revelatory experiences may be on the other side of great loss, sifting through memories. But there is a way that even disappointment and suffering is the divine's way of narrowing your choices to the right investment, choice, a divine partner, or path. Take good care of your hearts, dear Scorpios. Happy New Moon and July, Sagittarius. We have the celestial solar and star activations of the New Moon and Monthly Astrology putting a spotlight on your houses of divine partnerships and passion. And so if you are tuned in on YouTube, you can see the beautiful card spread here. And I want to begin your reading with the card in your spread that represents your spiritual lessons and the spiritual gateway open up for you this month. And the card is the beloved, right? This beautiful striking card. And the energy of this card is so visceral and just dynamic, all right? It reads, it says, the beloved is the recognition of spirit in another and moving towards spirit through the other. It is when the divine appears to us in the form of our child, our partner, our friend, and we experience being in love. I wanna add pets too. As we grow, we start to recognize the beloved in everyone, not confusing their personality with their divine nature. Accept the invitation to learn through the path of love. I'm going to read that again. Accept the invitation to learn through the path of love. Expand your being through union with another. When you recognize the beloved in another, you call forth their highest and purest nature. Follow the path of love. All right, and so the cards and the stars are inviting you to tap into your desires, your confidence and powers of creation and attraction. This is a time to commit to the routines, habits, learning and travel experiences and self-advocacy that leads to the financial, the self-love, family and relationship goals that you desire for your future. You're invited to do an audit of what dysfunctional dynamics you accept, surround yourself with, or even create as a foundation for any children or pets. You're invited to also do an audit of what you consume, value, and where, and just tap into the law of attraction. You may be surprised how your health, creativity, ventures, and quality of life improves this month and going forward, especially psychological health. All right. Supportive and like-minded associates, friends, and instructors could be a blessing for you. Also, pets or children. And you could find romance or a great opportunity with someone abroad or from a different culture. You're encouraged to broaden your horizons and your self-worth and accept love. All right. So I hope that you have an amazing month and let me know how it shakes out for you, how this resonates, right? Like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and take good care of your heart. Happy new moon, dear Capricorns, and happy July. The celestial solar and star activations are opening up a gateway for divine communion, commitment, and collaboration in all areas of your life. You're invited to commune with Mother Nature and commit to your health and helpful domestic and daily routines. 
you are invited to commune with yourself and collaborate with creative partners and wise people who have appeared on your path that support work projects and goals. With anything you're working on, there is a message here that success is assured, but more work and commitment may be required. As the activations light up your houses of assets and belongings and the psyche, you could rediscover something very valuable from your childhood, like an object or even a memory or a dream or a saying, or something that is inspired by a deeply mystical relationship that mirrors things to you this month. Establish communication lines and be open to receive. That is your message, okay? And so we have the empower yourself and allow yourself to receive cards for your advice for the month. And this reads, empowerment does not mean that we have power over others. It means that we have power over ourselves. We honor our capacity for free will and conscious choice while honoring the same in others. Now this card asks you to evaluate your present situation and take an ownership of your right to choose with recognition of the entitlement of others to do the same. And then allow yourself to receive, says, one of the greatest blocks in our ability to manifest our greatest desire is an inability to allow ourselves to receive. This card asks you to take some time to identify any inner beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes that stop you from receiving. And one by one, review and remove these resistances. All right. So... There's, yeah, you have Aries, the North Node, and Chiron doing some work <laughs> for you this month, all right? And so much of that is related to our deeply held beliefs, our core values, um, and also our memories, our relationships to culture and the deep past and parents and family, right? in nature, right? All of these things. So I hope that this resonates. Let me know if it does in the comments and like this video and also check out the remaining videos for your sun or moon sign and take good care of yourselves and your hearts. Happy new moon, dear Aquarius. So Aquarius, the title of your reading, your horoscope for this month is Saving Grace. And you'll understand why by the end. Hurtful words, ideas, and unwelcoming environments and colleagues may have been cause for you to put your guard up recently. But the universe has been guiding you to stay open to the power of love and the audacity to stay joyful in the face of enemies. And the main message that I got is that spirit just wants to encourage you to keep going, to go where the love is, to create where the love is, to be the embodiment of where the love is. Surround yourself with the purest forms of love from children and pets. Keep building up your good karma and humility while you're being tested with curveballs and any devils that show their face. And there's a message that if you do that, you will just be able to watch the archangels, ancestors, and light beings cover you no matter what happens. And this isn't even to say that every Aquarius may be in the right and in whatever circumstances and situations that you all may be facing. But it is to say that the divine is offering you all gateways of salvation. All right, in some way, some of you. So, especially for some of you who are just light workers, light in the right, right? This is 
your advice. There's this message that some curveballs and delays, even if they're disappointing, are happening to keep you safe. As like quite literally being gods, the archangels, and the higher being saving grace over your life. And so there's this message for you to release scarcity, release entitlement even, and to embrace humility and perseverance. If more work is required for you to reach any goals, physical goals, financial goals, goals and destinations and being able to enjoy a particular kind of harvest, right? And if you look at the cards here for you, these cards of harvest are in reverse, right? So um, there are examples all around you of how health and prosperity can disappear in the blink of an eye. If it's cultivated with bad seeds, shortcuts, or ill means, Right, versus the kind of gains in wisdom, strength, creativity, and longevity that come from humility and experience. And so there's just this message for you to know that it's all light. Stay in the light. <laughs> all right just stay in the light okay i'm getting a message that for some of you maintaining your mental health and keeping it going has been so much harder than you all have made it appear and seem and that certain disappointments and unmet expectations have been disappointing you so much more than you're able to show. <laughs> All right, but it's okay. It's okay. It'll be okay. All right, so uh, take good care of your hearts. If this message is super specific and it's for you, let me know in the comments or right, on Spotify if you're listening there or on YouTube, right? I'll be able to respond and just take care of yourselves, take care of your hearts while the divine takes care of you. Hello, dear Pisces, and happy new moon. Care, communication, grace, and generosity are the themes for you this month as you make big decisions related to home, money, and investing your time, money, and energy on what you care about. July begins a brand new chapter of balancing creativity, work responsibility, children, romance, travel, and rest. It is the time for you to shine and have fun with your passions and your work making connections and learning from feedback to tweak any projects so you maintain a fresh approach. Showcasing your playfulness and maturity in your communication while you're spreading love is the greatest approach to promoting things. And you'll find that it can result in great engagement and success in whatever you do. As the month progresses, you may be focusing on finances, family, and home and property that may even be far away. As the full moon sparks some potential agitations with colleagues or industry peers or friends, your advice is to just handle things with grace. And that's it, your reading was short and sweet this month, Pisces. So take good care of yourselves this month and uh, add some fun and some joy into your life this month, regardless of anything else that you may be handling and experiencing, okay? Make the most of these transits coming through your fifth house and also your money houses, all right? Blessings and potential.
you may be able to be a blessing to others and may find that your finances grow incredibly as well, being a blessing to you.